Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to our talk. We are going to speak about women and beer, and we call this uh, talk a lively history and a role to reclaim. Um, we will go through uh, five parts. Um, the first one is, of course, a small introduction about ourselves. Um, then we will uh, speak about the history of women in beer then about sexism in beer marketing. And um, we'll conclude uh, with two poems. Uh, first, what it means to be a woman in the beer sector nowadays, and then uh, what can we do about it? Hello, everybody. I'm Garlon Kergourlet. Um, I live in Montpellier in the south of France. I studied French German management and marketing in Paris because I lived in Germany for a couple of years and I worked for several industries before I got into beer 10 years ago. I worked for a brewery for three years before I could join the freshly founded French Association for Independent Brewers in 2016. Since 2018, I am a brewery consultant in France, Belgium and Switzerland, trying to help many breweries here in Europe. I can offer my knowledge and coaching when they need to develop or improve their process and or their strategy. I'm also a member of Pink Boot Society and I'm actually president of chapter uh, in France. Um, for myself, I'm Hélène Spitals. I live in Brussels. I have a master's degree in communication and I worked for several years in a feminist organization. It's been a few years now that I've been working in the beer sector, maybe uh, six or five. Um, and I work as an event planner and um, I help organize festivals such as uh, BXL Beer Fest, which is the beer festival here in Brussels. I also work as a guide um, and beer sommelier. Um, so I offer beer discovery uh, or pairing sessions and um, uh, guided tours in uh, breweries. I am also a member of a Pink Book Society and I am close to uh, Benelux chapter and the, France, the French chapter. And of course, I am still a feminist activist. Um, Garlon and I, uh, we met um, uh, three years ago in 2017 during the first uh, Bake Cell Beer Fest uh, festival. Um, and since then, we try to work together um, in the beer sector and also on feminist issues in the beer sector. Hello, um, then I will, um, first of all, I will um, think about, um, I will talk um, a little bit about history of women in beer. According to history, we can thank women for beer because beer consumption has been so disproportionately linked with men that it's uh, easy to forget women were the original brewers. The first beers. The world's oldest beer may have been brewed for a funeral 13,000 years ago in Israel. At a graveyard cave in Israel, archaeologists discover traces of meshed wheat and barley lining pits carved into the bedrock. The researchers interpreted these residues as leftovers from beer brewing, perhaps part of a funeral piece. You can see some pictures about it, uh, where the cave uh, is located in Israel, and um, a picture of the team who made the discovery. And as you can see, um, we have two men and two women, and that's a good thing. I'll let you show some pictures. The next part of beer history and women. Stone Age. This era began when people invented agriculture and settled down. 
They also wanted to make their lives comfortable and beautiful. And women uh, played an important um, part. Women were thought equal to men at that time. The women stayed at the home front and tended the farm. And there were great images of female deities. Then we can um, speak about the Sumerian culture and beer. Um, and um, it was in the Sumerian city of Uruk, uh, there is evidence of residents bartering with beer, trading the beverage for more uh, scarce and precious resources such as precious stones, timber, and metal. Beer played a significant role for women at that time as it provided economic opportunity in a heavily patriarchic culture. Mesopotamia was a dominantly patriarchal society where women retained significantly less rights than men, as many families often sold daughters into slavery or prostitution. And it was also um, a Sumerian goddess, Ninkazi, who uh, plays um, uh, today a very important uh, role to for the beer um, industry, because Ninkazi is a famous name for breweries or uh, suppliers. So Ninkazi was um, often depicted, and uh, you can see on the right um, Sumerian tablet with um, the allocation of beer rations for Sumerian workers. We also have um, ho uh, another tablet uh, with other laws about beer, like the laws of Eshnuna and the Code of Amurabi. Um, in the very important tablets, we can see uh, something uh, interesting. Uh, the word brewer was a feminine word, and the job brewer was a women's job only. Then uh, we have uh, two important goddesses in uh, ancient Egypt, like uh, Chenenet, who was a goddess of brewing and beer, and uh, she was depicted as a woman wearing the symbol of a coarse uterus as a headdress, linking her with the goddess Neskenet and associating her with the royal birth. Um, her name was may have derived from the word Tenemu, meaning beer. One uh, other goddess was Hato, um, goddess of agriculture, fertility, and childbirth. Uh, she was also a goddess of agriculture. She was associated with music, dance, drunkenness, and most of all, gratitude. Egyptian art also depicts women brewing, and perhaps this already long history of women's involvement with beer making is what led to what happened next the rise of the classical period uh, as a shift to a preference for wine over beer. And then we come to the Greece and Roma. And the Greeks viewed wine as a main beverage, while beer was viewed as effeminate and thoroughly déclassé. And the Romans inherited this prejudice from them. So we can um, sum up wine and men only during Greece and Roma. Then we can find some other important discovery in the ancient um, Peru when uh, elite women were made be in pre Incan culture um, more than uh, 1000 years ago. Um, an ancient brewery from a vanished empire was staffed by elite women who were selected for their beauty or nobility, a new study concludes. The finding adds the other evidence that women played a more crucial role in ancient Indian societies than history books have stated. It may also in some ways reflect modern drinking tradition in the Indian mountains where women get drunk as much as men 
um, researchers say. The brewery um, on a mountain top in southern Peru cranked out hundreds of gallons uh, of beer every week. The 1,000 year old facility was part of the weary empire which predated the Incas. And it was uh, destroyed uh, and burned um, when they left. And then we come to um, Middle Age, and that's a very important part of the history with the alewives. Women were very clearly the primary makers of beer across much of Europe then. These women rulers appeared in literature of the era as well, not just in civic documents. It has been noted that they were, there is no male equivalent for alewives, although the masculine brewer seems to have long been available for the small number of men in the industry while women could choose to be called roosters too. As brewing um, became more professionalized and less of a domestic duty, those roosters began disappearing. By the 15th century, England and Germany had uh, developed strong guilds for brewers, and while there were women among their numbers, the trend was a downward one. Then I would like to talk about Hildegard von Bingen and about hops. Hildegard von Bingen was a 12th century abbess of the Benedictine convent of Rupertsberg near Bingen, born in uh, 1098 at Buckelheim, not far from present day Frankfurt, Germany. She was probably the first person to describe hops in a scientific manner. Hildegard also wrote extensively about barley, which she considered beneficial for the stomach and intestine. So on the left, uh, you have um, um, a portrait of the English alewife Mother Luz, was very famous, and on the right, uh, Hildegard. After that, we, we will talk about industrial revolution in Europe. Um, dark age, witch hunts, combined with sanitation spoilage, allowed the church and monasteries to take control of the brewing activity. Industrial revolution mechanization completed the process of moving beer brewing firmly into the hands of men. In 1765, the world of manufacturing and beer production drastically changed with significant improvements to the steam engine and cooling too. For the first time in history, the idea of mass producing beer became a reality and there were no place for women uh, anymore. By the 18th century, women brewers seem to have largely disappeared from the professional ranks. Women still appeared as tavern keepers, many of whom brewed their own beer. Uh, in colonial America, a not inconsiderable percentage of tavern keepers were women. While the 19th and 20th centuries saw women appear in ever increasing numbers of beer advertisements, their role in this ads shifted dramatically. So you can see uh, like big uh, great words but um, on the left causing uh, extensive flooding and some example of mechanization with beer bottling on the right. One thing we would like to add about that history is that um, we are well aware that um, what we just said is quite um, uh, centered around Europe, but that's where we're from. Um, and as we um, make our research in French and English, 
um, it's sometimes not easy to find um, uh, facts about women and beer, uh, the history of women in beer in, um, in America or in Asia. And so uh, we are sorry if this is just an, an insight on uh, uh, the history of uh, women in beer, but uh, we are well aware of that. And uh, that's what we, uh, we can um, uh, state here on this part of um, uh, the world uh, for us in France and Belgium. What I would like to speak to you about right now is uh, sexism in beer marketing. Um, so uh, as women do not have a place anymore in the beer industry as brewers or as consumers, um, their image um, will be used to sell beer to men um, through two stereotypes. The first one is um, uh, beer uh, is nourishing and uh, the woman is definitely necessarily a good wife or a, and or a good mother. Between the 19th and the 20th century, um, beer is seen as a produce for men. But um, we know that women are known to be the one doing the groceries. So women need to be seduced uh, to buy beer to bring home. And so beer is portrayed to be healthy, nourishing. And um, light beer was even sold to breastfeeding women because they were told it would help them lactate. And what you can see on this very famous ad um, um, in France and in Belgium, uh, Beer is nourishing. This woman drinks it, this one doesn't. And you can see the one drinking beer is healthy. Her baby is healthy too. She seems happy. And uh, the one on the right doesn't drink beer and both seem not quite as healthy and quite sad too. Um, but women needed to buy beer also to please their husbands and to be a good wife. And um, so um, they um, were sent um, images so that they uh, would um, buy beer for uh, their men at home. Can we shift to the next image? This one um, shows you that even if the woman isn't a good cook, she's definitely still a good wife because she can buy beer and even she didn't burn it. Um, so those types of image showed to women that um, in order to be a good wife, they had to buy beer. Soon everybody learned that beer isn't healthy nor nourishing and brewery lost the right to use that argument to sell beer. So they had to find another one. And the one um, they uh, turned to was also quite a, uh, largely wet spread ID um, is that brings beer brings you pleasure and um, you know that at that time um, the marketing largely used also the idea that the uh, female body could bring you pleasure too so they um, linked the two and seducing women started to appear on ad and were used to sell beer to men they were uh, lightly dressed, showing skin, and with flirty glances and smiles. So what we can conclude from that is that these advertisements conveyed to consumers, and especially to women consumers, that the woman uh, cannot drink beer, but her role is to buy it and to uh, serve it or sell it. Um, and decades of hearing that and seeing that over and over again, um, obviously it ended up entering um, the collective imagination. A woman doesn't drink beer. Uh, but so advertising has created a male dominated beer culture featuring sexualized women. But then, um, who uses sexist marketing? Of course, we know that big industry do. The first image 
Um, is from a well-known brewery and a well-known beer here in Belgium, um, Interbrew, uh, created uh, in uh, 1971 a new marketing plan for Jupiler, their well-known beer, their well-known lager. Um, the goal was to give a cleaner and more masculine image um, because um, surveys had shown that the beer was popular with both sexes and even had a feminine image among drinkers. Um, and partly because of that, uh, it was perceived as not entirely a real beer. The company then decided to use a new slogan and that slogan barely evolved over the years. First, it was a real taste for, of good beer for all men, then a real beer, a men's beer, then men, this is your beer. And finally, a men's beer. And uh, it stayed like that for 46 years. Um, a men's beer in English, uh, in French, uh, it says men know why. Um, and uh, according to Interbrew boss, Albert Van Damme at that time, um, he said, um, and I quote, it's the women who do the marketing, who do the shopping, and then when they buy beer, they want to please their husband. And that ID stayed for 46 years at Interbrew. But then um, an other uh, sexist image that were used uh, for marketing were um, misogynistic ads objectifying uh, women, um, picturing um, uh, ugly wives and men that uh, would uh, have to um, leave home to have a good uh, beer with friends. And uh, it even went to uh, associating beer with rape culture. And we owe that to Bud Light, as you can see here, um, a bottle that says the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night, hashtag up for whatever even rape. Um, that um, ad campaign was, of course, um, uh, sources of huge um, feminist um, claims and um, Bud Light had to remove it, um, fortunately. So we, we see that uh, big industries um, use sexist tropes, but um, Unfortunately, uh, craft breweries do too. Um, it's not because a brewery expressive, expresses progressive value in how it does business that it is not immune to the use of sexist tropes. Just because someone is an independent brewer is no guarantee that they are willing to uh, fight for equality, that they won't indulge in vulgarity, or that they are not uh, misogynist. And um, there's plenty of examples I could show you uh, of craft breweries using sexist marketing. Here are some from Belgium and France, and I am sure um, you have um, yours in your own country. Um, these two are from two breweries in Belgium, Belgo Brewery and Mille Vertu Brewery. Um, just so you know, Petite Vertu in French means a woman of ill repute. The second ones are from uh, Une Bonne Pip Brewery in Belgium and La Gaillette Brewery in France. Uh, both are uh, work play oh, or not on the French for blowjob. On the left, um, the beer offers you a good blowjob um, by Miss Simone. And on the right, we can assume that the fairy is there to offer you a blowjob too. Um, sexist marketing is also used by really well-known brewery. And when uh, we as feminists criticize sexist labels here in Europe, we are often told that we never say anything about the label of the Rosé de Gambrinus um, from the brewery Cantillon. That's not true. Uh, people voice the fact that that 
uh, label is really sexist all around the world. I'll show you uh, some resources um, later. But a fun fact to know is that um, in order to be able to continue to sell that beer in the US, um, continue, continue had to change the label. And on the US label, the woman is dressed uh, the, in a blue dress. Um, but um, the brewery refuses to change the label for the rest of the world. Another idea is that um, sexism is not limited to men. Um, and um, of course, um, sexism as it's part of our socialization, um, it's not, uh, women are not immune to it. And of course they also use it, especially when it comes to producing beers aimed at a female audience. Um, here it's a French example. Um, this brewer wants to create, and I quote, something for girls, a feminine beer, fruitier and lighter. Those beers are meant for women because they do not have a high level of alcohol, not more than 5%. But men love it also. So you see uh, here, uh, even if it's a woman, she has that idea that women only drink light, fruity beer, um, and not uh, strong ales or um, um, brown beers. So, um, what does it mean to be a woman in the beer sector nowadays? Let's start with uh, professionals, women that work in the, in the beer sector. First of all, we are underrepresented. There's not much numbers you can find about women in the beer sectors, but I um, found a um, research from the Stanford University quoted in 2016 by the US Brewers Association saying that only 2% of breweries have women only founders, that just 4% of the breweries have a woman as a brewmaster, and that the numbers increase somewhat if you include any female ownership, but still only brings the numbers to 20%. Those are US numbers, but we can assume it's slightly the same uh, for the rest of the world. And even though things are changing, breweries remain overwhelmingly sorry, dominated by men. We are underrepresented and we are also invisible. When you picture a, a brewery in your head, who do you picture working there? Women are being underrepresented and breweries are perceived quasi as uh, male only industries. And so women are invisible. A few days ago, a video spot created by a French wine organization circulated on social medias. This video promotes uh, Beaujolais Nouveau, and in it, all the wine professions were um, represented by men. Wine growers, wine merchant, um, restaurant owner, enologist, all were men. Only two women appeared, um, restaurant owner and a consumer. Can we say that only men produce and sell Beaujolais Nouveau? Um, does it mean that no woman works in that sector? Of course not. Of course there are women working as um, wine um, maker, wine brewer and wine merchant, but they are invisible. This is obviously an example taken outside of the beer sector, but in this sector, are we really doing better? Women um, have to create something for themselves because men won't do anything for them. Too much boy clubs already. Auto organization is the key for boosters and female professionals in the beer industry and for consumers too. Uh, it's the subject of another talk during this summit, but I'm sure you already know the Pink Boot Society, founded in 2007 by uh, Terry Fand of in, in the USA. We are here to assist, inspire, and encourage women beer professionals through education. 
that's what uh, that's what um, Good Society say. Um, collaboration today on match uh, the ACE uh, for the International Women's Day is another action um, from the King Good Society. Other examples uh, like Beer in Sima in France, if you know Elizabeth Pierre, or Beer Without Bird in Scotland, um, meetups and events for women who like beer. And then for consumers, um, women do not get to choose what their taste in beer is. After having excluded women for, from consumption for decades, industrialists now realize that they still represent, that we still represent half of the population. And it is a shame to deprive them of their money. That's how gender marketing appears. After decades of advertising dominated by women for men, New codes are created to seduce these new consumers. But, but in this case, no half-naked men, no men objects. Industrialists prefer to maintain the sexist cliches. Pink packaging, pink beer, not too much alcohol because women are delicate. What it means is that women have the right to drink, but only what they are told to drink, what, we will, what will be created for them. But we come to the conclusions. Something positive, we can do something about it and we will do it, right? What we can do? We can put women in the spotlight and we will do it. We can write about women. We can spotlight the women working in, in the breweries. You can, as a man, uh, spotlight the women working in your brewery. That's possible and you can do it and you have to do it. What you can do, you can recruit women at all positions, including as a brewer, and promote them to leadership positions. What you can do, what we can do all, pay attention to the vocabulary you, you use. In French, brasseur, in English, brewer, are masculine words used to describe both male and female workers. In French and English, the feminine words brasseuse and brewster are not used anymore. But rather than use the word brewer as a generic masculine, we might as well use the term brewery, which will evoke the industry rather than the male figure of the brewer. What we can do also um, is uh, before creating a label, ask to women, to feminists around you, whether it could be seen as sexist, as oppressive. It's always better to do it before creating the label than uh, when it's too late. Um, feminists and uh, will always give you um, gladly uh, advice on what is oppressive and what is okay. Um, because we want the beer uh, world to be as inclusive as it can be. And so don't ever hesitate to ask a feminist her opinion on your label. Um, dumping a sexist label won't lose you business, but uh, use, using a sexist label probably will. And uh, to finish with, what we can do also and what we are doing right now is talk about sexism in beer and fight against it because it means changing things in society as a whole. The consequences of living in a patriarchy are everywhere and this is a, the reason why it's so uh, difficult to tackle, to dismantle. And um, the sexism in beer and uh, its manifestations such as labels, such as attitudes, uh, such as words, um, it is not a battle of secondary importance. We have to tackle patriarchy from every possible angle and beer is just another front. We are quite um, aware that this is just an overview about sexism in beer and um, this is quite a, a European-centric overview but uh, don't hesitate to send us infos that you could have 
about sexism um, on your side of the world and also about um, the history of women in beer um, in South America or um, elsewhere. We um, have also some resources to show you. Yes, first about history of women in beer. We relied on many resources, articles, but uh, we want uh, you to be able to read um, some of them. So um, first, um, the, we want you to introduce you to Caroline, Caroline Cailly, a fl French uh, blogger who wrote Une histoire de la bière au féminin, um, so uh, a history um, of beer uh, and women. Uh, you can find uh, the, the text on her blog, uh, Hoppy Hours. Then um, we use some text from um, the National Women's History Museum in the US, um, a text from uh, Alice and Shell, Women and Beer, A Forgotten Pairing, and uh, from uh, Courtney Isman, um, According to History, We Can Thank Women for Beer, from the Huffington Post. That's about uh, history and then um, about sexism. Um, I wanted to give you some text about uh, what I spoke about, um, about marketing. Um, the first uh, text from Lily Waite um, is called The Male Goose, Cantillon, Cabaret and Context. Um, it speaks about um, the label of Rosé de Gambrinus, but also about an event that uh, Cantillon organized uh, here in Brussels during a Swans Day two years ago. Um, it's published on Good Beer Hunting. Um, there's also a really nice text from Melissa Cole, um, which is called From Dreamsicle to Shelf Turds, where to, where to Turn When the Shouting Stops, about actions you can do as a feminist or as an allied in the beer sector, also on good beer hunting. Um, Jeff Alworth uh, published four articles um, called Sexism in Beer on his blog, Beer, beer Vanna blog. Um, it uh, really sums everything up about sexism in beer and also about things that we haven't talked about here, such as um, sexual aggressions and rape in the, in the beer sector. So it's quite um, um, exhaustive, but it's quite also hard to read sometimes. And to end with two other articles uh, from my Belgian point of view, one from Owen Walsh on his blog, uh, Brussels Beer City, and the article is called Belgian Beer Labels and Sexism, hashtag times up for turning a blind eye. And um, another article uh, when Walsh asked me to write for him, which is called uh, Sexism, Sexism in Belgian Beer, We Are Fed Up. Um, I hope this will give you uh, plenty of things to read from. We, will, we would also like to thank uh, some people. First, Carlan Cailly, who um, uh, inspired us um, uh, on this subject, with whom Garlon worked. Um, of course, we would like to thank the Beer Summit team for the impeccable organization, and especially Amanda Reichenbach for inviting us. And um, we thank you for your attention. Um, we hope you enjoyed this talk online and we hope you will enjoy the whole online edition of the Beer Summit. Um, let's hope that next year we will be able to be physically present for the next edition. <laughs>